One more quote that I want to read you related to this from a planter in Mississippi in 1865 talking about his former slaves. He says, um, this is in his diary, he says, I do not know what their plans are for another year, but I think they want to farm on their own. They have an idea that a hireling, that is someone working for wages, is not a free man. Our Negroes have not been disposed to entertain the idea of hiring at all. They want to rent land. Our Negroes have a fall, a tall fall ahead of them. They will learn that freedom and independence are different things. A man may be free and yet not independent. The Negroes think that if they are hirelings, they will still be slaves. This is an amazing little document. They think that the person who works for wages is not truly free. What's going on here is a fundamental redefinition of what freedom is in American life. That's part of the crisis of Reconstruction. Who else had we heard some weeks ago saying the man who works for wages his entire life is not free? Hmm? Leaders of the South during... No, I'm not, well, maybe so, but I'm talking about another person who has spent, we've spent a lot of time talking about. The man who works for wages, the North offers people the opportunity to get out of the wage system. If you, but if you work for wages your whole life, you're not truly free. That's Abraham Lincoln. That's Abraham Lincoln. The slaves are repeating a very common idea before the Civil War, that freedom, it goes back to Jefferson, freedom means economic independence. Working for wages is fine as a temporary condition, but not as a permanent life sentence, so to speak. But Reverend Agnew said, the, the planter says, no, a man may be free and yet not independent. That's the planter idea, they may be free but that doesn't give them any other rights. It certainly doesn't give them the right to economic autonomy. They have to go back to work on the plantations, and that does not interfere with their, with their, with their freedom. So again, this whole question of who will control the labor of these former slaves is a, it's really part of a fundamental debate about what freedom is in the aftermath of the Civil War. Now, um, here's a cartoon from Harper's Weekly, the great labor question from a southern point of view. A planter is sitting on his veranda reading the newspaper. He's got his wife and child next to him. Some black people are working out in the fields and there's one guy with a hoe and a pickaxe or something. The great labor question. The planter is saying, you've got to work. You've got to work. The planter sitting there doing nothing is saying to this guy who has the implements of work, you've got to work. This is a, um, what is this cartoon? This is, this is a kind of ironic or sarcastic comment on what Sidney Andrews points out in the document in the Janap book. The ubiquitous complaint in the White South in 1865 that blacks will no longer work. The free Negro will not work. As one person wrote, there is no power to make the Negroes work, and without that, they will not work. We, how to make them go back to work? Now, of course, this is absurd. They're doing all the work to begin with. The guy sitting in his rocking chair is worrying about whether someone out in the fields is willing to work. But this was ubiquitous in the Southern press in 1865 and for many years after the end of slavery. What's interesting about this in a way is there's a racial element in this and you'll find it all over. They're just inherently lazy, they don't want to work. But if you step back for a minute, you'll find the English said the same thing about the Irish. Every colonial power said the same thing about colonial peoples, whether it's Africans, people in India, people in China. They don't want to work. You hear echoes of this today that people just basically don't want to work. And some people take from that the, uh, for example, the debate that's been, it's still going on about extending unemployment insurance, which ran out for the long-term unemployed a few months ago. And Senator Paul of uh, Kentucky 
I, I quote Senator Paul not because I have any animus toward him more than anyone else, but I give him credit because he says what a lot of people think but don't want to say. Paul says, people are lazy. That's why they're unemployed. If you give them unemployment benefits, they just won't work. So the way to make people work is to starve them, basically. Force them to go to work. Now, of course, in the North, the free labor ideology had a different idea. Lincoln's idea and all these others was, no, you give people in set positive incentives. The reason people work is to improve their condition in life, to acquire goods, to improve the condition of their family. You give them benefits from work, and they'll all go and work. You don't have to whip them. You don't have to force them. You don't have to starve them. You create opportunities for them, which they can gain through labor. That's the free labor idea. But of course, Southerners said that, that doesn't apply to blacks. Blacks are so inherently lazy that they will not, if you, that in fact, the argument then went, therefore, you've got to pay them very low wages. Don't pay them high. In the North, you say, give them good wages and they'll work. No, give them low wages, because if you give them too much, they'll stop working as soon as they can eat, you see? So you keep wages low to force people to work. That's the sort of, so th this whole idea, and, but then the other question is, what do you mean by work? What is work anyway? You might say that's pretty easy to define, but it's not. Here's a, um, here's a, uh, a memorial from the Cotton Planters Convention of Macon, Georgia, okay? The Negro in freedom is, uh, Negro labor in freedom is 30% inferior to what it was in a condition of servitude. All plans to have failed to overcome the characteristic indolence, laziness, of the Negro. The history of Negro communities proves they will not work as laborers and will be satisfied to subsist, that is to survive, and will add nothing to those products which the world especially needs. In other words, what they're really getting at is that blacks will not work in a market orientation. That is to say, they will subsist. They will grow food for themselves, which actually involves work, but they will not produce the products the world especially needs, i.e. cotton. This is a cotton planters. Buried in this argument is the fear that um, blacks will not act as market-oriented individuals. You know, our economists, neoclassical economists, classical economists in the 19th century, basically see mankind as composed of what they call rational profit-maximizing individuals. The economy functions because people want to maximize their income and their consumption. So therefore, if you make more money growing cotton, you'll grow cotton and you'll buy your food. That makes more sense than growing food where you don't gain any income and you can't buy it, you can't be part of the market. But the argument is blacks are not rational profit maximizing individuals. They're lazy, but laziness also involves just a lack of desire to participate in the, in the market. They value non-economic things like family stability, like uh, freedom of movement, like freedom from gang labor or control by overseers to monetary um, incentives. Now this is not true in many ways. There are plenty of blacks who went on strike in this period for higher wages and responded to market incentives. Um, but people who worked for themselves were not considered working. See, the underlying assumption here is that work means work for a white employer. So here's a North Carolina planter. Want of ambition will be the devil of the race, these blacks. Some of my most sensible men say so they have no other desire than to cultivate their own land and grain and raise bacon. That's laziness. It actually takes work to cultivate your land in grain and raise bacon, i.e. pigs. But um, that's not working for a white person. That's working for yourself, and that is not work. So this whole question of will blacks work, is, is, it has to be retranslated. Will they work on a plantation under white supervision? And the argument is no, they don't, they don't want to do that. 